Hello, I'm JW. This time we're looking at dimmers again, and this is really from a couple of comments which were made on the other video, and one of those regarding power factor, and does power factor change as the dimmer is changed in brightness? So we'll have a look at that, and we'll also have a look at uh, using a variac and see what happens to the waveform with that. Now a variac is basically just a transformer that directly alters the voltage, and uh, that was used for dimming a very long time ago, so it's in decades. The problem with Airact is they're very large and heavy things, so not very practical to fit in the wall, but uh, before electronic dimming circuits were made, then Variacts were a thing that we used, and uh, even before that, resistors were used, which was basically just putting a variable resistance in series with the load, and that achieved the same result as in directly controlling the voltage. And the problem with resistors is that they have to be extremely large as well to handle the amount of power, and they get extremely hot in use as well, because it's basically just wasting away the additional power as heat, whatever's left goes to the lamp. So let's have a look at the power factor to start with. So this is what we've got here then, and we've got the uh, very light dimmer we had before. It's currently set into mode two. Filament lamp over there, that's a 40 watt one in this case. And we've got the uh, meter here, which we can see the actual power factor displayed. And we'll use the oscilloscope later for the other bit, uh, though it is still connected, but uh, this is what we're gonna be using for this one. Now, uh, power factor should be effectively one if it's just driving the lamp directly, as it's a purely resistive load, but we'll see what it says here once we put the dimmer into the circuit. So we've got the meter here, this is the power and voltage coming in. You see at the moment it's about 250, so it's on the high side again, as it quite often is here. This will be the power factor here, and then we'll show the current over here, and the various other ones are actually how much it would cost per year, which we're not particularly interested in here. And then the sort of elapsed time at the bottom it's been on for 15 minutes or so already. Now, if we just turn the light on directly, which is basically with that override switch, then uh, that's basically going to show us a power factor of 1, because it's a purely resistive load. Power is actually about 38, or coming up to 39 watts, so it's slightly lower than the 40 watts that was claimed. See so the voltage dipped slightly because it's uh, 248. And we are running this from the isolation transformer again, so that's partly why the voltage is a bit higher than it should be. But uh, there we go, power factor of 1, and pretty much uh, what you would expect. Now, you notice the voltage is actually varying slightly. This is purely because the supply to this building is, of course, shared with many other properties in this street. So as loads and things are turned off in various other places, the voltage will vary by a small amounts, and that's entirely normal. And in fact, if you check the voltage on any outlet, pretty much anywhere, you're going to get that slight variance all the time, just because of the fact that loads on the whole system are changing. So let's see what the uh, dimmer actually does now. So if we turn off there, and then we just turn on the dimmer, and remember it's got this ramping up thing, so we should see the power increase fairly gradually. So see there, the power obviously increases up to around 38 watts, but uh, even at full brightness where it is now, it's only got about 0.992 as power factor, so it's certainly not the same as we had before on the 1, but I'd say it's pretty close to that. Now if we turn down the dimmer, we'll see the power here reduce, and also see what happens to the power factor. So just turning down the power now, and we can see the power factor is reducing as well. So if we're turning down there, say around 30 watts, power factor is now down to about 0.8. And if we keep going down further, say down to about 20 or so there, power factor is around 0.6. And if we have to get down to the absolute minimum this will go to, the power factor is absolutely horrendous at uh, only about 0.2. So that's on the minimum there, and it's still using around 3.5 watts. If you look at the lamp, it's actually uh, pretty much off. And uh, if we just have a look at the uh, lamp here, we can see that there's pretty much zero brightness going on in there, despite the fact it's still drawing around three and a half watts. Now, if we just increase this somewhat, you can see it just glowing a fairly dull red there. That's around seven watts, but the power factor, you can see through the lamp there, is around 0.3. And then as we increase, that's sort of around uh, half power there, around sort of 18, 19 watts points, perfect at around 0.6. And as we go up to the full brightness, of course, there's the uh, 0.99 that we had previously. So the power factor does vary considerably across the brightness range. Basically, the higher the brightness, then the nearer the power factor is to 1. And of course, the lower it is, the worse it becomes. And as with the other dimmer, 37.7 watts or so on what is claimed to be maximum, but if we switch on the override, then we'll see that the actual power goes up to around 39 watts, and again the power factor then goes up to around 1. 
Now what about LEDs? Well we'll try that 10 watt uh, Corby lamp that we had in the previous videos and this is a dimmable LED so it will work with the dimmer we've got. Now we turn it on at full power to start with. Of course dimmable LEDs still work on the normal switch as well but it's just they obviously don't do any dimming. So we'll just turn that one on. This is supposed to be a 10 watt LED. Power there we see is around 9.6 watts so pretty close to the 10 watts that was claimed but notice that the power factor is only about 0.78 so even on full power the power factor is still fairly poor and that's due to the circuitry in the LED it's not a linear load but of course LEDs are not linear items and it's going to have some kind of uh, conversion circuitry in there possibly a capacitive dropper or some other electronic switching deal so even on uh, direct power the power factor is still only around 0.78 so let's, uh, let's turn off there and now we'll try the demo. We'll start with it turned to maximum and of course it will do that ramping up thing as before. So a similar effect we had with the incandescent lamp. 9.18 watts so again slightly less than we had on the direct power and again the power factor around 0.7 and we saw there that the power factor of course changed as the actual power did as well and again if we turn this down see the actual power is falling away and so is the power factor so it's a very similar kind of effect to we had previously so it's about sort of six watts power factor is around 0.6 and if we go down further see so the power factor now falling away to 0.4 and below and we're getting around in the sort of bottom here so that's around sort of two and that's actually the minimum so minimum is up two watts power factor around 0.3 so uh, fairly similar to we had before but uh, the uh, course difference here is that even on full power with no dimmer involved power factor is still only around 0.78 and we can just switch that in there and again that's your full power 9.7 watts and again power factor 0.78 now let's try with the variac we've got here this is just a transformer that we can adjust the actual windings using this handle to effectively have it between almost nothing and a fairly high level and I've got the meter plugged in as well so basically the mains power is coming into this thing then it's going out to the variac coming back via the other lead here and then it's going into the thing here and I've just switched it onto the override so it's basically just a straight through connection we're not using the dimmer at all even though it's still uh, obviously there same 40 watt lamp as we had previously and uh, as before we can turn up the brightness here so if we turn the knob here you'll see the lamp over the back there obviously gets brighter so certainly in terms of functionality it's pretty much the same but let's have a closer look at what's going on with the power and also the power factor over here now starting out here with the uh, variac on minimum and we can see it's already drawing around 12 and a half watts with a power factor of 0.6 and this is mainly due to the losses within the transformer itself or the variac itself if we actually take the lamp out of the socket and uh, here it is so now there's no load attached but we're still using around 12 and a half watts this is a problem with uh, variax and variable transformers for this application they do waste quite a lot of power and so in this case it's around 12 watts even when uh, no load is connected and uh, power factor you see is around 0 0.6 again that's because this is not a linear load it's basically a big inductor so we'll put the lamp back in and again see there's pretty much no difference in the power there and then we can turn up the brightness to something we can start to see it illuminating so just turning up the power here it's now glowing a sort of a dull orange you can see the power factor has uh, changed a bit there and as we keep increasing the brightness power's coming up on the right here and again the power factor is also increasing so we're coming up to a reasonably uh, moderate brightness there that's around 30 watts or so and if we keep going up to the full brightness which is approximately around there then we can see the uh, power factor is nearing one again but again it's still not quite right because it's still at the transformer in the system and the power now is around 54 watts about 40 watts for the light and of course the rest is waste in the actual variac windings so yes you can use a variac for doing a little dimming but say it is fairly wasteful so in this case this takes around 14 watts or something when it's uh, just sitting there doing pretty much nothing so I go back to down the zero again there we got sort of 12 and a half watts or so just sitting there idling and this is why if you put a transformer in a circuit a transformer will always warm up or get hot simply because this power is being wasted as heat within the windings of the transformer now let's see what this looks like on the oscilloscope 
So here we have the oscilloscope, and again this is the AC waveform, it's the voltage on the various devices. And we're at the full brightness at the moment, or pretty much there, so uh, power factor showing around 0.95, so nearly as good as we can get. And if we actually reduce the brightness by turning down the variac, we can see in this case it's a very different thing to what we had on the dimmer. All that's happening is that the peaks there are basically getting shorter, so the actual voltage here is just reducing, so there's no sort of cutting or changing of the waveform. Now we're down to about half, that's uh, showing about 27 watts there. Power factor is around 0.8, and we can continue turning down there, so we're coming down now, the lamp is sort of a very dull orange, and uh, power factor is now reduced down to about 0.75, and as we just go low it's just simply reducing the size or the amplitude of the waveform here, so it's the same basic shape, except of course we're now having uh, much smaller peaks there, so the voltage applied is actually less. Again we turn back up again. Power factor seems to vary between about 0.8 and about 0.95. It does depend on the exact positioning of the transformer. But again you see that it's fairly linear in the way that the voltage just increases and decreases. Now this is the same again with that 10 watt dimmable LED, and we're turned up to pretty much the maximum here, drawing in the region of sort of uh, 29 watts, bearing in mind only about 10 watts, so that is actually the LED, the rest of it is uh, basically the transformer. And again we see the waveform is again fairly normal and sort of sinusoidal shaped, it is slightly flattened at the top here, but if we turn down the voltage or the transformer, we're going to see it's a very similar effect we had before. All that's happening is the amplitude of the waveform is reducing, and the LED is dimming reasonably well. It's not uh, quite as linear as you'd expect, so at the top end it's the difference visibly is considerably less. As we get down to about here, which is around the halfway point, then it does dim fairly smoothly. So LEDs do apparently dim on the uh, Variac type of supply. Now in terms of power factor, when we're at the full brightness here we've got a power factor of around 0.85, Bearing in mind the LED didn't have a perfect power factor anyway, and of course the transformer certainly doesn't. And again, as we're reducing down, then the power factor is coming down to around 0.7. And we get down to this point here, which is basically the minimum, and we've got a power factor of around 0.6. And of course this is just showing a small part of the waveform. If we actually expand that, you can see that of course it goes all the way across, repeating endlessly, basically forever. Here's a look with the LED on the entire setup. So this is pretty much at the full brightness here, and as we turn down the control here, you see the LED does reduce in brightness, and as we get to a certain point here, then it reduces considerably more quickly. That's the point at which it's basically completely off, but there is actually quite a bit of uh, movement left there. And again, when turning on, it will uh, have pretty much nothing at the bottom. There's a certain point around here where it would have suddenly come on, Initially the brightness increases fairly quickly, as we continue around it does increase but it's more slowly towards the top end there. And again we're back, back to roughly the full brightness again. So that's dimming with the uh, power factor, and as we saw there the power factor does change considerably as the dimming settings are adjusted. And it's not too surprising because bearing in mind it's considerably modifying the waveform, so uh, obviously it's not going to be a linear load once it's in the dimming region. And again, you can dim with a Variac as well, although let's say it's a completely different type of dimming, it is literally just reducing the voltage as the uh, thing is turned down. But uh, of course you can use them, but they're still quite bulky and uh, fairly expensive items, and there are also those losses in the uh, transformer windings as well, so not normally used as a practical dimming item these days. So that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.